In today's video, we're reviewing all the latest NHL trade rumors that comes from Elliot Friedman's latest 31 Thoughts blog. We're looking at teams like the Boston Bruins, Chicago Blackhawks, Pittsburgh Penguins, New Jersey Devils, Toronto Maple Leafs, and more. And that's coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned today, we're looking at some NHL trade rumors. Most of the information comes from the latest column by Elliot Friedman, the 31 Thoughts blog, which had a lot of information in today's post. Now, let's get started here with the Boston Bruins. Now, as we know, veteran forward David Backus was recently put through the NHL waiver wire and went unclaimed. So, of course, now he could be assigned to the American Hockey League, where the Bruins would certainly get a bit of cap relief, just a little bit shy of $1.1 million. Uh, uh, but they're not quite ready to make that move here just yet. Apparently, they've given David Backus some extra time uh, to make a decision if he will report to the American Hockey League, and that decision does not have to come until after the All-Star break. Now, there's been some talk and some chatter about the fact that he may not actually want to report to their American Hockey League affiliate and that he could possibly retire. But in this blog by Elliot Friedman, he does acknowledge the fact that the retirement rumors likely are false and he doesn't really see that happening. But at the same time, it doesn't mean Backus is going to report either. There is a possibility he could end up suspended if he doesn't do so. Um, there's a number of other scenarios that could unfold. But the fact that he has one more year left on his contract with an actual cash payout of $4 million tells me that he more than likely is not going to want to leave all that money on the table. So what happens with the future of David Backus? What kind of cap relief will the Bruins end up getting uh, based on his decision and what they do with him certainly will be an interesting scenario to watch unfold here. Now, at the very least, like I said, he will go down to the minors and they will be able to bury part of that salary and get some relief. Uh, like I said, I don't see him actually retiring. I don't think we'll see a situation unfold like we saw with Ilya Kovalchuk in the Los Angeles Kings. Um, but will be interesting to see here if he actually goes down to the minors or ends up suspended or retires or what happens but according to Friedman the retirement rumors are not true now he also has another interesting thought in his 31 thoughts blog where he discusses the Chicago Blackhawks and the Florida Panthers of course we recently saw the return of coach Joe Quenville to the Madhouse of Madison in Chicago where the Florida Panthers recently visited the Chicago Blackhawks both teams have been playing some pretty good hockey as of late both had some pretty decent winning streaks trying to get into the NHL playoffs of course the Florida Panthers are a little bit more in a better position but the Hawks are certainly working their way into the conversation and appear to be in the race now as we approach the NHL All-Star break. Now, the thought that he wonders here is if Chicago comes out of the All-Star break and does happen to fall out of the race, could the Florida Panthers and Coach Q come calling to maybe see if they can pry Duncan Keith out of Chicago. Now, there's been some talk really over the last one or two years about the veteran core of the Blackhawks players maybe being broken up by them and moving on to some different roles around the NHL. But there's certainly been a lot of talk about the futures of many of the other Blackhawk veterans like Corey Crawford, Duncan Keith. There's even been some past talk about Jonathan Taves. And it's really not really clear that the Hawks really intend on doing a whole lot to break up that core group of players who they had so much past success with. But obviously Duncan Keith having a form of a no trade clause can have some say over his future. But would he accept an opportunity to go play for Coach Q in Florida and have another playoff run under his belt? Uh, Duncan Keith, even though he's getting up there in years, it still appears to be in really excellent shape. Shape, uh, and certainly can still handle big time minutes so it'll be interesting to see if there's anything to that thought of Elliot Friedman's if the Florida Panthers could actually come calling to the Hawks for one of their veteran D players here obviously the Panthers would have some interesting prospects uh, to offer up in a potential trade uh, they very well might have to have some cash going out as well depending on their exact cap situation at the time of the deal uh, but it's certainly interesting something to keep your eye on here if Chicago falls out of the race now we've talked about other players uh, in the last few days on the Blackhawks that could possibly be moved. We've talked about other Blackhawk players here over the past couple days that could be moved if the Hawks fall out of the race as well, but right now they're playing great hockey, and if they're going to be in the race with a shot at making the playoffs, I really don't see them doing too much. Now, he also mentioned in today's column that the Pittsburgh Penguins continue their pursuit of veteran forward on the Minnesota Wild, Jason Zucker. Now, Zucker has almost been traded by the Wild on two separate occasions, but of course, that was both under former GM Paul Fenton's watch during his time as GM of the Minnesota Wild between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Calgary Flames. They both had a lot of interest in his services and both thought they had trades to land the forward coming to their club. Of course, the Flames were last year at the deadline and the Penguins were during the past offseason when they were trying 
him to trade veteran forward Phil Kessel. So, of course, Pittsburgh still remains interested in his services. A guy like Jake Gensel out of the lineup for the rest of the season certainly makes sense that that would be the type of player that they would target and try to bring into their fold. Uh, for the Penguins, of course, they've battled through a lot of adversity, tons of injuries this year, and they've uh, had a lot of guys stepping up and playing big roles for them down the stretch. Brian Russ is having an incredible season uh, as well. Certainly been a big part of that success. Crosby missed time. Uh, Melkin's played well in his absence, and now they're starting to get to that point where they're finally getting healthier. It'll be interesting to see how dangerous they are down the stretch, and if they have another potential Stanley Cup run in them, uh, they certainly have the parts necessary heading into the playoffs, so they're going to be a team to watch, but could they possibly make another attempt and, and actually land Jason Zucker out of Minnesota? I would not be surprised if Bill Guerin would at least entertain the possibility, but I know after a few near trades before, it seemed like he might be a player that Guerin may not want to move, but I do see some potential moves coming out of Minnesota, and it could be some potential big shakeups. We talked about the possibility already in the last few days about Matt Dumba possibly being moved. Zucker could certainly be thrown into the equation. Unfortunately, when you're in a situation like Minnesota, if you decide you want to go through more of a rebuild, you're going to have to give up value in order to get value. And those are two of the players on the roster who could likely bring them the best return. Now, there's been a lot of chatter around the Toronto Maple Leafs lately. Obviously, there's a lot of talk about them uh, potentially going after a backup goalie or improving the defense uh, and likely moving a young forward to do so. Now, there's all kinds of talk here recently. Uh, he does talk about this in the 31 Thoughts blog where he mentions Casper Kapanen's had a lot of chatter around him in the rumor mill, but it seems as though the general consensus around the NHL is that he would only be moved in a more significant multiplayer trade who would significantly improve the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, he also goes on to say, that the three UFA defensemen, including Barry, CeCe, and Muzzin, he doesn't really see any of them being traded right now unless they were bringing back another defenseman who obviously could replace them because they all play, you know, 20 minutes a night. They're all pretty important pieces on that blue line when they're all healthy. And at this point, the Leafs are trying to get to that point. Uh, obviously, it's going to take a little while between Muzzin and Riley to get back on that blue line and get healthy again. But clearly, they do need some help on the blue line, but that they might not want to be moving out any pieces unless there's somebody better coming along who can play those same big minutes with a potential contract that's going to maybe uh, work for them longer term as well. That's why I mentioned Matt Dumba. He's been mentioned in some other rumors, uh, but Dumba's a type of player who can play 20 plus minutes, has a really good contract, and if they have a big enough contract like a Cody Cece or Casper Kapanen or a combination thereof going out, they very well could make that work possibly. So could we possibly see a big deal with the Leafs? Could Casper Kapanen be included? I do think it's quite possible, uh, but like he said, I do think it would make more sense if it's part of a larger deal that would significantly improve the Leafs. Now, we've also heard some rumblings about the Leafs and the Oilers talking. We've also heard some rumblings about the Leafs and the Red Wings even talking as well. The Red Wings, there was a rumor going around they could consider bringing back goaltender Jonathan Bernier as an upgrade over Hutchison and possibly veteran defenseman Trevor Daly who would come at a cheaper cost or maybe even Mike Green, which might be more challenging due to his bigger contract than Daly. But uh, I guess we'll see if there's anything to those rumors. I wouldn't think that the Leafs would want to give up a player like Kapanen uh, for a couple of aging veterans who could certainly help with the depth situation and fill some holes right now. Uh, I could see them maybe making some other players possibly available, but that to me wouldn't be the right move for the Leafs. They're going to be moving out a guy like Kapanen. I'd hope they bring back a solid top four defenseman uh, who could certainly be a big part of their team for at least the foreseeable future here. A couple other notes here as well, including the Vegas Golden Knights. Of course, they're 1-1-1 one, one, one under new head coach Peter DeBoer. The Golden Knights certainly would like some help on the blue line, and Elliot Friedman goes on to talk about the possibility of Peter DeBoer bringing in a defenseman from his old club, the San Jose Sharks, who appear to be falling out of the race. We'll see how the Sharks come out of the All-Star break and how they play, but if they become sellers, which many of us feel they likely will, could he possibly try to encourage his team to bring in a Sharks defenseman, Brendan Dillon, who apparently, according to Friedman, he's a big fan of and really likes how he plays and could see him uh, helping the Vegas Golden Knights blue line, especially in a playoff run. So Dillon's a pending UFA defenseman as well. Uh, could be a short-term, possibly long-term solution in Vegas. So we'll see what happens there. But could Peter DeBoer have some influence over the roster and maybe bring in a former defenseman he's quite familiar with from the Sharks? I mean, obviously, it's kind of weird to see DeBoer with Vegas after the rivalry that those two teams have built up. But could they possibly do some future business and get a player from San Jose over to Vegas before the playoffs? And lastly here, I want to touch on the New Jersey Devils. Now, this isn't a rumor about something that could happen. It's something that almost did happen. Apparently, they were having trade talks with uh, 
uh, an unknown NHL team, uh, and they had a trade offer for veteran center Travis Zajac. Now, Zajac does have a no trade clause, uh, so he actually did end up rejecting the deal. However, Elliot Friedman has said on multiple occasions, not only through this blog, but in past ones, he felt that Lou Lamarillo, of course, who was with the Devils for a long time, very familiar with Zajac, would at some point attempt to bring him to the Islanders, so he wonders if they may have been the team talking to the New Jersey Devils. Of course, the Devils are in a unique situation now where they've gone through a different coach and GM this year. So I'm not quite sure exactly when those talks took place, and we can't confirm 100% that it was the Islanders that they were talking to, but clearly the Devils were open to trading him. Uh, otherwise, they would not have brought the trade request to his attention. So certainly will be interesting to see if he has any change of heart or not, but right now they're saying that Travis Ajak thought things over and decided he wanted to finish things out with New Jersey, wouldn't expect the trade and because of his contract it really can't do much about that so so if it was the islanders we'll certainly be interested to see if they make another move to try to bring in another veteran ahead of the nhl playoffs that is your rumor roundup here for today of course as always we'll know your thoughts and opinions and everything discussed so make sure you let me know your thoughts down in the comment section and we can continue the conversation if you're new to the channel consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well i'd appreciate it if you did as always thank you for watching and i will catch you next time.